for three weeks the Joseph Slipi Museum in Zazris near Ternopil was the center of interesting games, parties, picnics, baking and sightseeing for 22 young people from the Cherkasse, Donetsk, ivano frankivsk Lviv, Ternopil and Zhytomyr regions of Ukraine. However, the main reason for them being in the Patriarch's native village was to study. Here we have created a family bond feeling and I think the children sense it as there is a great response from them both during the learning process and after it. Classes were aimed at children and young adults mastering their English skills. The school was organized by the St. Sophia Religious Association in the USA for young people aged 15 to 22. The St. Sophia Association regards itself as Patriarch Slipi's spiritual child, and it has always felt the call to develop his ideas. He obviously placed God first, but Ukraine always came straight after. Since our association has maintained a strong bond with the Ukrainian people, we decided to create a project for young refugees from the war zone and for children whose parents are currently serving there. Eventually, we also included orphans and students from the Ternopil Seminary. This year, we have additionally invited students from the Kyiv Seminary. The ESL Summer School is a charitable endeavor Students who spent three weeks learning, living and resting were sponsored by the St. Sophia Religious Association, which provided all participants with books and school supplies. The main goal of the project was to create, even though artificial, uh, but a full-fledged environment where the students would learn English not only from books, but also on an everyday basis. The school established four levels, elementary, pre-intermediate, intermediate and upper intermediate. The latter was added for students who were preparing for international language testing. Such a school creates a language environment where we can communicate in English with our teachers. In a week or two, we begin to think in English. We learn new vocabulary. Therefore, it is a combination of theory and practice. Next semester, I will study in Sweden. Therefore, it is a crucial time for me to know English as the learning process there will be solely in English. I will spend six months in an English-speaking environment, so I need to communicate with people in this language and also study. Four instructors taught at our school. All of them came from abroad. There are instructors who teach conversation, another teaches grammar, there is a reading, comprehension and adapted literature. That way every teacher focuses on one aspect of English so the students is more able to learn. Anastasia Kaminska comes from Philadelphia where she works as an assistant at the Ukrainian Heritage School. At the ESL summer school in Ukraine, she taught literature. All books are level adjusted. The original books are adapted to certain levels of the ESL by a company in the US. We read literature without translation, then we discuss books and we do various exercises. If students do not know a certain word, I try to explain its meaning in English and subsequently it's used on the tests. In most cases, the students try to get the meaning of the words by themselves. The first couple of days, each of us would read a paragraph and then we would try to understand it. If someone mispronounced a word, Nastya would write it on the board and for our homework, we had to translate it and to learn its pronunciation. Later, on the test, these words were key words and we had to match them with sentences which would be grammatically correct. The adaptation process didn't take long. As the teachers say, this year the school gathered well-organized, creative and friendly young people. All the students are special, interesting personalities. We have become close friends. 
the very beginning, they seemed to be reserved. I think I looked strict, but then we found a common ground. And, and now it's very interesting to discuss various topics. For Marta Penkalska, a college student, the ESL school was her first teaching experience. She taught composition and vocabulary. The girl is happy to have had such an opportunity. I'm still a college student and I don't work. I was invited to teach here and I think it was a good chance for me to help students improve their English. Also, it was a nice opportunity for me to develop my Ukrainian. Marta likes the fact that her students are very open and accept those who are different. Because they are almost the same age, the girl was easily accepted by the group and actively participated in all extracurricular activities. The group is great. We've made a lot of friends. There is live communication with teachers and that's very nice. The learning process seems easier, we learn material faster and in a more interesting way. We don't just learn to speak English here, we also learn to communicate and even to live. The people are very nice and happy, and it's great to communicate with them. As for the language, I see improvement, visible improvement in all blocks, grammar, conversation. Before the school, I knew basic rules but couldn't really speak. Here, instead, we have one teacher, Tracy, who doesn't speak Ukrainian. So we have to find a way to communicate with her, and that's what I really like. Tracy is not a professional teacher, but with her straightforwardness and care, she captured students' hearts. As a professional baker, she led baking workshops for the participants, who admired her skills. Moreover, those who celebrated their birthdays, among other gifts, received birthday cakes from Tracy. During classes, it was sometimes difficult to find words to explain meanings of some phrases but she was really impressed with the students' desire to learn. Oh, with the kids, it's, it's great. <laughs> they all want to learn. With other kids, in the beginning they come, maybe their mother and father make them or, or something. But, um, but these kids, you know they want to learn, so that's... Since Tracy does not speak any Ukrainian, she became a great asset to the ESL summer school. Children also took over translation duties. For example, while sightseeing, they would translate for her from Ukrainian into English so that she wouldn't feel excluded. It's very nice to see how they care. Apart from that, when the students organize classes, which they conduct for the entire school, they prepare the program with the utmost scrupulosity. Last week we had four presentations which they conducted in four theme groups. All of them were entirely in English. On the other occasion, the students videotaped commercials of various products, items or events and also presented them in English. That way they had an opportunity to get some teaching experience. The learning process filled the entire working day and did not differ much from lessons in any other educational institution. It is very hard work and for those three weeks they have been really busy. They help each other, they come to us for extra materials or additional explanations. In fact, they're always studying. We obviously try to entertain them. For instance, tomorrow we're having a talent show. We organize various parties. But regardless of that, the learning process occupies their mornings, afternoons and evenings. Even when we watch and discuss films or have karaoke classes. Therefore, we have a language school where students are submerged in the English language. Because of this complete immersion, children had little time to call their parents who, however, didn't have to worry. Of course, students shared their feelings in social media. Every day I was emotionally present there with the children, as they accordingly presented every step of their day on Facebook. 
And it was very nice, very, very moving. Emotions filled my heart to the brim and left me speechless. It seemed as if I was traveling, learning and relaxing with the students. And it was a really great experience. The Josef Slipin Museum also has a chapel, which was opened some two decades ago. The Divine Liturgy is celebrated here on a daily basis, as well as morning and evening prayers. The students of the ESL school took part in this regular schedule. The program has been prepared not only bearing in mind intellectual development, but with a desire to provide children with spiritual enrichment, to give them an opportunity to benefit from this unique atmosphere of the birthplace of Patriarch Yosef. Therefore, prayer constitutes an integral part of our daily program. We begin and conclude the day with prayer. We say the Rosary have stations of the cross, Two weeks ago, the seminarians offered a Panachida service on the tomb of the Patriarch's parents. Moreover, we invite priests who celebrate Sunday Divine Liturgy in English. Prayer is also important. It has to be a priority. It helps us to focus. And to pray in English is a new experience. And when you realize that language doesn't really matter to God, he knows all languages, especially the language of the heart. And not only God knows what noble feelings fill the hearts of the summer school participants, which not only help them mastering their English skills, but also to achieve the dignity of the followers of Christ. Patriarch Yosef always reminded young people of this. We also opened our graduation ceremony with prayer. The Divine Liturgy in English was celebrated by Father Martin Khomyu. During the official ceremony, Irina Ivankovic, director of the ESL school, read a letter addressed to the students by Cardinal Lubomir Huza. Tatyana Sharko, the school administrator, read a greeting from Professor Leonid Rudnitsky, chair of the St. Sophia Religious Association of Ukrainian Catholics in the USA. The students expressed their gratitude to the teachers and cooks. All participants were awarded with certificates. Festivities concluded with a reception, followed by singing and dancing. It wasn't easy to say goodbye, as everyone realized they had made a new family there. Whatever the future may hold, the ESL Summer School in Zazrist will always remain a bright and unforgettable chapter in the participants' lives.